All right, beginning your factoring review for your factoring test, what you should always do at the very beginning of each problem is look to see, can I divide both numbers by, or both terms by anything? I can divide both of them by 5. They also both have an x and a y squared. So then when I divide them out, I get 1. There's 1x one remaining. Both y squareds divided out. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. The x's and y squareds both cancel out, so that's all that's left behind. Another example of that would be like number 7 here. I can factor out a 2 first, leaves you with x squared minus 49. Now you also always need to check whatever's left behind in parentheses if you can factor it more. This is a special case called the difference of squares. If you can take the square root of both of them, then I can factor both more. The fa uh, square root of x squared is x, square root of 49 is 7. So the rule is you do an x plus 7 and an x minus 7. And don't forget the 2 that you already had out in front. Okay, so this is the difference of squares, very important. Here's another example of difference of squares. The square root of 64 is 8, with the x still attached to it. The square root of 9 is 3. So you have an 8x and a 3 in both of them. One's a positive, one's a negative. Uh, for another GCF1, number 2, you can factor out because you have a leading negative, you can definitely factor that out, which would leave you with x squared plus 3x minus 28. And now you have just a straight up polynomial. You read it from right to left. What multiplies to 28 and subtracts to 3? Well, that would be the numbers 7 and 4. So that means I have a 7 and a 4. The rule is the bigger number gets the sign in front, and a positive times what gives you a negative, it would be a negative. You can keep that negative out in front. Okay. Number 3 is also an example of a GCF. I can factor out a 2, and they each have an x squared. I'm left behind with an x squared, a 4x, I'm sorry, not a 4x, now it would be a 2x and a minus 3. Then I can factor this more. What multiplies to 3 and subtracts to 2 would be 3 and 1. So I have an x in each, 3 and 1. Don't forget my 2x squared was out in front. Bigger number gets sign in front. Positive times what gives you negative, it is negative. Number 4 and number 6 are, and number 9 as well, are all regular factoring of polynomials. What multiplies to 30 subtracts to 1, that would be 6 and 5. So 6, 5, bigger number gets the sign in front, which is negative. Negative times a positive gives you a negative. In 6, what multiplies to 6 and adds to 5, that would be 2 and 3, and they're both positive because bigger number is positive, positive times positive will give you positive. Uh, let's do number 9 as well while we're there. X in each. Numbers that multiply to 18 and subtract to 7 are 9 and 2. Negative 9 and positive 2. So negative for the sign in front. Negative times positive gives you negative. Uh, number 8. Looking just for a GCF. They have a Z in both of them. And you should be able to divide both of them by 4. When you do that, you're going to be left with uh, X cubed. And when you divide this by 4, you should be left with 27y cubed. And double check, can you factor that anymore? No, you cannot. If you only have two factors with a plus in front, you won't be able to factor that anymore at this point. In number 10, I can factor out a negative 9 because of a negative out front. You definitely want to factor out negative. It will leave you with x cubed minus 1. If it was x squared minus 1, you could factor that more, but because it's x cubed, we're not able to do that yet. Okay, let's look at the second half here. Number 11, pretty straightforward. What multiplies to 48 and adds to 16? This one's a little bit tougher to see, so I'm going to list out the factors. Remember, you can do this at any time to try to find ones that work. So this would be 3 and 16. Did I do that right? No. Yeah, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 6 and 8. Those are all the factors. Which one of those add to 16? That would be 4 and 12. So x with 12, x with 4, what we need, the bigger number has got to have the sign in front. Negative times what gives you positive, it's also negative. Okay, number 12, you have a number out in front, so i got to be able to try to pull something out. I can't divide any of those by the same number, and none of them have a term in common. So this one's already in factored form, can't do anything more with it. Number 13, facts of 81 to add to 18 are 9 and 9. So x with 9, x with 9. Bigger number gets signed in front. Well, they're both positive because they're both equally big. Another way to write this would be x plus 9, the quantity squared. In number 14, they all have a y in common. 
They all have a 3 in common. When you divide those out, I'll have x squared minus 4x and minus 21. So now I can factor that more. What multiplies to 21 and subtracts to 4, that's going to be 7 and 3. So I'll have x with 7, x with 3. Bigger number gets the sign in front. Negative times what gives me negative in the back? It'd be positive. 3y staying out in front. Okay, let me do 20 real quick because it's a difference of squares again. 4x and 1 for both of them. And remember, with difference of squares, one's positive, one's negative. With this one here, I can take the square root of both of them, but because of the plus in front, you can't do anything with it. It's already in factored form. Let's do 19. I can factor out an 8, leaving me with x cubed minus 8y cubed. Check and see if I can factor that anymore, which I cannot. Um, numbers 16, 17, and 18 are all going to be factored by grouping, where you're going to take the first set and the second set. I can factor out a 5x squared from the first part, leaving me with 2x minus 3. I can factor out negative 2 because of that leading negative. I have to factor out a negative, and it'll also leave me with 2x minus 3. My two factors are the two guys in parentheses should be the same, and the guys that are left behind is my other factor. All right, same thing with this one. From the first box, I can factor out an ay squared, which will leave me with an a minus y. And I can factor out from the second part, I can only factor out a c, which would leave me with a minus y. So my two factors are a minus y, because they're the same, and the ay squared plus c, because that's what I pulled out in the factory. Last one here with grouping, pull out a, sorry, a 2x, which leaves me with 2x plus 1. And then I can factor out a, this should have been, I think, yeah, y and y squared. So I can pull out a negative y, which will leave me with 1 plus y. Now, are these the same things on the inside? No, they aren't. So we can't do factor by grouping. So this one cannot be factored any further. There you have it. You have a picture of all of them tomorrow. Best of luck.